Jeff, the issue of how evolution articulates with a deep belief in God, God is the creator, particularly in the Judeo-Christian Islamic world where there are scriptures that, that give a seemingly historic record, is indeed an emotional uh, and uh, occasionally political and scientific uh, tense area uh, of interest. Um, what I'd like to do is just to understand the landscape, particularly of how theists in their great variety think about evolution. What's referred to as the creation evolution controversy, I actually think is a, a misnomer. There are dozens of different controversies, and if we think of the, the landscape of uh, theological response to evolutionary theory, uh, I think of it in terms of having two axes, uh, and one of the axes is, is the question that is raised. So, uh, leaving aside uh, questions of uh, even uh, strict biblical interpretation or history, you have you, you have um, epistemological and meta-ethical questions uh, raised by evolutionary theory. These questions would be... Where did morality come from? Yeah, where did morality come from? Is the, and what are the implications for moral realism? Mm -hmm. If our um, cognitive capacities that dispose us to belief in God evolve, what does that have to do for warranted belief? Mm -hmm. uh, there are questions of um, human uniqueness and what it means to be made in the image of God. Whether there was a real Adam or not. Well, then, then we get into the historia. <laughs> Yeah. historiographic questions. So there, uh, Galileo is reputed to have said in his uh, letter to the Grand Duchess, science tells us how the heavens go. The Bible tells us how to go to heaven. Uh, actually, he didn't say it exactly that way, but I, I love the fact that we can continue the play on words here because um, biblical theists um, actually don't just believe the Bible tells us how to go to heaven. They also believe that it provides some account of how heaven came to us. Uh, Christians believe, for example, that uh, heaven came to us in the incarnation of, of Christ. And uh, So that's basically uh, how God has, has been involved in history. Right. So the, the question there is a general question of what, how, if at all, the purposes of God have been worked out through history. Okay, so just let me understand. So these two axes, one are the kinds of questions you ask, like where did morality come from? Are we unique as human beings? Our cognitive capacity, if, 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 it, if it is predisposed to religion, what does that say about its fundamental reality? So those are the, the kind of abstract questions, if you will. Uh, and then you have the, the history questions on how God well, the, is... The, the other axis would be actually one's, perhaps uh, one's read of scripture and... Um, so, particularly in the historiographic questions, on the one hand, there's a very literal read of Genesis that mm -hmm. believes it is history and it is science, and um, the Earth is 10,000 years old, and if you do your science right, uh, it'll confirm that fact. And those folks are typically called young Earth creationists or scientific creationists. Uh, so they would look to find, for example, evidence uh, in, in the geological strata that there was a worldwide flood, the Noatian flood, and that caused the, a, a lot of the things that we attribute uh, deep age to. Right, and uh, that's actually a re relatively recent phenomenon in the, the anti-evolutionist fundamentalism in this country that emerged uh, in the early part of the, the 20th century uh, actually didn't <clears throat> embrace that view. That <clears throat> that's a, was an add-on later on. Um, there's a kindred view that believes the earth is old, uh, young, based on a reading of the scriptures. But they wrestle with the tension that um, they recognize that science rightly done uh, points mm -hmm. to an old earth. Um, so this view uh, just lives with the ambiguity in one way or another. Uh, uh, and yet another view, maybe a more moderate reading of scriptures and uh, one that uh, concedes more to scientific theory would has been called progressive creationism or old earth creationism, which views the earth as being really old, four and a half billion years, lots of evolution has occurred, but there was uh, punctuations of God's divine activity mm -hmm. uh, along the way to create different species. And the people like that use Stephen Gould's punctuated equilibrium as a, as a justification, although he didn't do that. Um, they <laughs> often do, uh, a view of the fossil record, the Cambrian explosion, right, all these right. species out of nowhere, um, they also argue for the limits of uh, uh, genetic change. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. re speciation requires, or, or maybe uh, higher taxonomic uh, uh -huh. levels require miraculous intervention. Uh, 
there's a view that, that concedes an old earth and everything evolved except humanity. Um, uh. And uh, a couple of versions of this, uh, some, some folks believe that humanity was supernaturally created directly out of dust, the literal reading of, of Genesis. At, at some point in the, in the normal scientific evolutionary yeah. process, there was a sudden non-scientific divine intervention to do this one miracle. Everything yeah. else was normal yeah. science. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The former pope uh, affirmed the adequacy of the entire evolutionary process, uh, mutation selection, uh, just like every uh, biologist uh, posits, uh, adequate to account for the origin of some proto-human and then at some point God supernaturally ensouled th this being. Oh, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's an interesting question about whether that represents uh, uh, an acknowledgement and confirmation of evolution or whether it's evolution <laughs> denying. It, mm -hmm. it certainly represents a, an affirmation of the empirical uh, dimensions of evolution. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell, uh, empirically test whether a soul was present or not. And then um, lastly, there's, uh, there are versions of evolutionary theory which posit, no, the whole thing was, was uh, natural. Uh, that exactly what the theory prescribes is, is what happened. And there's even though there a debate within, between those who uh, affirm the existence in some way of a historical atom and those um, who don't. Now that would occur because God set the initial condition of the universe such that, plus the laws of physics, that it would be inevitable that humans, so they still have their God, but they do it through the initial conditions and the laws of physics. Yeah, now I think that point is, is uh, the most fundamental and the most interesting uh, theologically and scientifically. So, well, it builds a moat around your theology where nobody can ever attack you. It's self-consistent, self-insulating, and irrefutable. How's that? Well, because if you're, if you're saying that, that God set the initial conditions and the physics to, that oh. humans would, would evolve, then you can never be proved wrong. Well, actually, you can, and that's why I think it's <clears throat> such an how. interesting question. Tell me how. Um, for, for example, Steve Gould, <clears throat> who agreed with the, uh, the comment I made about uh, Galileo earlier, that mm -hmm. you know, his, his notion of noma, non-overlapping magisteria, he argued that, that um, religion's about the meaning of life, science is about the mechanisms of, of life, and if you do them right, they never conflict. <clears throat> but interestingly, on this issue, he said they did conflict. Uh, he argued that um, uh, there were no trends worth speaking of in evolution, uh, that the evolutionary process was so contingency laden right. that if you played the tapes of uh, evolution a thousand times over, you'd never get uh, the result we got now. And therefore, he argued, that belief in a God who providentially ordained this outcome is incoherent. Mm. So the philosophical problem with Gould's point is that um, his notion of contingency is an epistemological notion. Uh, we, we couldn't have predicted this, but mm -hmm. of course the notion of God is being outside time and uh, omniscient, it would not necessarily be a surprise mm -hmm. to God even if it were contingent. But the empirical problem is that um, we've illuminated, in, uh, just in the last few years actually, uh, illuminated not only, or confirmed not only a number of thematically consistent trends in evolution, but also a series of evolutionary transitions. Um, by, and the work has been done by people without any theological mm -hmm. agenda at all, that really does look like a, a series of transitions to forms of life with greater cooperative interdependence uh, and which culminates in, in human beings and human sociality really is deeply embedded in the fabric of evolutionary history. So the ascientific uh, uh, theory would, uh, in a sense, accept the science but say that, that, that God had to create a parent age, which means something like creating the photons from the stars that look like they're billions of light years away, but in midstream, so that when the, everything was created, we had this whole sequence of photons yeah. in this long row. Yes, they would. <laughs> uh, and the rationale they get for that is that uh, God created a, a fully functional creation, hmm. uh, not to deceive us, uh, just because 
he wanted it to work. Uh, like the the water from wine from water at Cana may have tasted like it was old. Now the problem with that, and many many people subscribing to this view acknowledge that, is that well, creating the photons from stars to Earth makes sense. Creating a fossil record with fossils of organisms that looked like they lived that never lived doesn't make much sense, and it's not clear how that's necessary for a fully functional creation. And so they need to live with ambiguity here. Uh, and there's an interest, fascinating epistemological problem here where they see, uh, uh, they, they believe in the deliverances of science and they believe in the deliverances of scripture and where they don't agree, unlike the scientific creationists, they don't distort the science to fit the scripture. And they just have to say, I don't have this one figured out yet.